Blog Talk Radio. Hello, welcome to the, I was going to say the Midnight Miracle Hour, but it's not, it is It is the Midnight Miracle Hour, but it's on at 10, and we call it Pastor Dean Live at 10, so everybody will remember the time, and I am so glad you are with me, I am so glad, I'm, I'm stir crazy here, I've been waiting for you, <laughs> Pastor Dean Pepin is my name. And I am the pastor, the senior pastor of Healing Hands of Jesus Ministries. It is a, my son-in-law keeps telling me, he says, don't confess that this is a small ministry. He said, confess that it's a big ministry. Well, it's a small ministry with a big heart. A small ministry with a big heart. And we, because, because we have faith. Because we have faith, this small ministry is reaching the world. Now, is this power, is this power, is this ability, this favor exclusive to Healing Hands of Jesus Ministries? No. Man, if you've got faith, if you have faith, you can change your world. And we're going to be asking for panelists to join us uh, on the program in just a few minutes. Um, If you'd like to be a panelist, please bear in mind a couple of things. Long pauses are death to good broadcasting. (laughs) Uh, number two, we must hear you distinctly. Don't use your um, your uh, blue your Bluetooths. Uh, you must be verbal. Speak up, interrupt, be informative, stay on the subject, and don't ramble on. In fact, you can bring up your own subject. Bring along your sense of humor. Bear in mind, God does smile. And I have at the suggestion. Of uh, a longtime listener and friend, Patriot Greg, we have the ability tonight to go two hours. So if we get in a hot subject or if we get into a barn burner argument, we'll go the two hours. Okay, or go as long as we want, up to two hours anyway. Six four six seven one six forty four ninety. Here every night until t- uh, at ten o'clock. Listen, uh, I also wanted to say another thing. I was thinking of going back to midnight, but so many people have uh, contacted me and said they like the ten o'clock hour better. And if we stay at the ten o'clock hour, we can go the extra hour. I can't go from midnight until two. Although I know we'd have probably more listeners. Uh, or more people in the chat room, because we've got some other good shows that are on the air at the same time that we're on, and uh, long-time listeners have uh, been listening to uh, to the other shows, and and uh, we, we understand. So you have to listen to us by archive, but we, we're going to stick, stick it out at 10 o'clock and see what happens. I believe that God has told me to stay here at 10. Okay. Are you ready to do battle? Are you ready to do battle with the devil, not with me? No, 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 no. Here's what I'm going to start off with. 
And you know what? See, see, I, I, I have preached this before, and when I started uh, complaining about something at a board of directors meeting one day here at Healing Hands of Jesus, uh, one of the people on the board of directors turned around to me and said, Pastor Dean, I'm just going to tell you what you've been preaching to us. And I said, what's that? And she said to me, never complain about what you permit. Ooh, there's nothing that's more cutting. There's nothing that is more blunt than somebody preaching back to you what you preached to them. Never complain about what you permit. You see, what's the difference between you and Jesus Christ? Well, I, I believe that Jesus Christ was fully anointed by the Holy Spirit. And because of his perfect human condition, because of his perfect human condition, he was able to absorb everything that the Holy Spirit uh, sent his way through the Father, or the Father then sent through the Holy Spirit. I, he had the full, he was fully anointed by God. He had every gift from heaven. We, got, we are working on things, aren't we? Uh, I believe that our faith, our, uh, we, we limit our faith, we limit our capacity to believe God because of our stubbornness, because of our sin, because of our uh, traditions. But the point is, we have got the Holy Spirit inside of us. We've got that Holy Spirit. Christ had the Holy Spirit. We are sinless in the eyes of God. Christ was sinless in the eyes of God. So do you see the potential we have? Yes, it is true. We do have the potential to be little Jesuses walking around the earth. Now, let me get my Bible. That's why I believe that Jesus said in John 14, 12 through 14, Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. Now, How can we do greater works than Jesus? And it, it's not necessarily just healing what I'm talking about, folks. I'm talking about everything. We can turn politics around. We can turn the poverty situa situation around. There should not be one person going to bed at night who is uh, hungry or sick. We can, we can do things that are impossible to people who don't believe. Now, Jesus was the only one with the Holy Spirit, and look at what he did. He was a cleaned-out temple of God. He was a beautiful temple of God. He was the, a church walking and talking. And we're, the, we're, we're in his image. We're imitators of him. And he has allowed us by his stripes, by his cross, by his blood, he has allowed us to be cleaned out temples so that we can possess the Holy Spirit of God. When we realize that we're in the same condition as Jesus, Spotless before the Lord because of the shed blood. Possessors of the Holy Spirit. Then we can do the same things Jesus did and even greater things. Why? Because you have the Holy Spirit, I have the Holy Spirit. 
our friend has the Holy Spirit, and together with all of us having the Holy Spirit, man, we should be unstoppable. Absolutely unstoppable. So the, that's where I have come up with the the the, uh, the theory in life that never complain about what you permit. Why? Because you're first of all, and 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 when I get weak, and I get into my own pity parties, these preachings come back to haunt me. <laughs> because my wife will say to me. Don't complain about what you permit because you've got the Holy Spirit inside of you. See, the circumstances that we're living in right now, the circumstances we're living in, they're not permanent. They're not permanent. I said they're not permanent. And this is the part that people don't like. You have permitted your present circumstances or they would not exist. Well, Pastor Dean, I'm a black person living in the ghetto of New York City and you're telling me that I permitted this circumstance and uh, that's why I exist that way. Well, if you want to stay in the ghetto, if you want to stay in the ghetto from a spiritual standpoint, from a, an, an emotional standpoint, and from a physical standpoint, you can stay there. But what you tolerate, you authorize to exist. You can change anything. And here is where the here, here's where I'm gonna really rub some feathers here. Faith can change your world. I know that's a little audacious, but but faith can change your world. Faith not just to bless your chickens in the backyard. but faith to change the world. Now, listen to me. Please, don't get the wrong impression. I, well, you know what? Get the, this is what I... People bristle. Some people who do not subscribe to my uh, my way of thinking just bristle when they hear the, some of the things I'm about to say. But, but, I, but I've got to say them because God wants me to say them. There's a potential in faith. There is a potential in faith that can change the world. The world is changeable. It needs changing. And guess who is responsible to do it? Guess. You. And, and 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 if you know i believe that it is possible that no one has ever released the total power available to him through faith including me i have not released the power available to me through faith that's why uh god said to paul uh regarding the thorn hey your grace is sufficient you should know by now paul what you can do with the Holy Spirit, with the with, with 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 the grace that I have given you. That's saying something. I believe that nobody on this earth has ever been totally dedicated to their use of faith, except Jesus, uh, uh, grappling with faith, struggling with faith until until they understand it. Until we all understand what faith really is and know it and reach out to change the world in which we live. Well, maybe you're going to be the one. Who knows? I even think a person, a wonderful person like uh, Billy Graham, as 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 effective as that wonderful man has been in his life, I don't believe that he has even used uh, uh, more than a mustard seed of the potential of his faith. 
That's how faith that's how powerful faith is. That's how powerful faith is. Now we're going to get to the panel in just a couple of minutes if you'd like to join the panel 646-716-4490. I just want to get the theme going and I want to set the show up. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Natural man through natural science. Listen, we can explode atomic bombs. We can go to the moon. We can release megatons of, of, of destructive energy. And we call that power. Possibly as far as uh, we know, power at, at its ultimate. But you take faith like Elijah. Faith like Elijah, when he sealed the heavens from moisture for three years. <laughs> That's more powerful than atomic energy, isn't it? And then when he prayed and he ended the drought with instant, uh, with the... Uh, with abundant rain, uh, got him into a little bit of trouble too. But that demonstrated power beyond natural man's ability to control or even analyze it. I'm telling you folks, man can push a button and we can operate. Uh, the, some of the assembly lines I have seen on the computer are absolutely ingenious uh, but Moses, through faith, just lifting his hand, just listening to the Lord and lifting his hand and speaking of a word, caused the Red Sea to open. The water stood up, and, and on both sides, the seabed dried, and more than, more than two million people with their herds and their flocks walked right through without sinking uh, knee-deep in the mud. Not so for the Egyptians, but but that's the operation of faith. Do you see what I mean? Holy Spirit put that in the Scripture for a reason. Everything is to be repeated. Everything is repeated in the in the Scripture. Faith can change your world. Never complain about what you permit. Either accept the present without complaint or make a decision. Make a decision to use your faith and if you use your faith, you'll attract a miracle from God and you'll change whatever is impossible in your life. Now we're going to go to the telephone lines. We're going to begin our panel in uh, about uh, two minutes. So if those of you who want to be on the panel, by all means, you're welcome to do so. Our telephone number is 646 646- 716-4490. This is Pastor Dean live at 10. And we want to hear from you. Twitter. Twitter. I love it. It's a social media that inspires me, gets my creative juices going, sometimes gets me angry, and other times makes me laugh. <laughs> I'm inviting you. I'm inviting you to follow me on Twitter, at Pastor Dean, at Pastor Dean. I'll follow you back, and I guarantee you something from heaven will arrive in your spirit as a result. Yes, Pastor Dean is on Twitter, at Pastor Dean. My Facebook address is Dean Pepin, and there's nothing more 
that I would enjoy than to be friends with you. Twitter, at Pastor Dean. Tumblr, Notes of a Pastor. Facebook, Dean Pepin. Let's get acquainted and be friends forever. Six four six seven one six forty four ninety. Subject tonight is faith. Uh, we'll be talking about faith. I, th- I believe that faith can do anything in your life. Uh, I don't believe that a Christian should be complaining and yanging and and uh, haranguing. No, we have the Holy Spirit in us, and we should be we should be using the precious Holy Spirit for what we're supposed to do. Hello. Let's see. Are we connected? Yes. Hello, Christopher from Bristol, Connecticut. Hi. How are you today? Oh, great, great, great. Again, I just got off the phone with my Uncle Stash, who just went okay, to the Prairie hold, View in UConn Hold game. on to, for just one second. Hold on for just one second, Chris. Hello, and who is this? 203-515. Lori? Dr. Dino, Pastor Bird. Pastor, Pastor Fern. Fern, oh my God! Yes, Fern Pachardo. I was. Let's bring it on. Let's do it. Amen. <laughs> we were Let's talking about you back. last night, Pastor Dean. Remember, we were talking about. Remember, I I shared last night about the about the seven seals, Pastor Dean, that Fern yes. mentioned three years ago. We were talking about your message from three years ago, Pastor wow. Dean and I. Wow! Wow! What a cool. Amen. Okay, oh, hold, on, hold on, hold on, Fern. His number. <laughs> Hold on for just one. Let me set the panel up here. Eight six zero two zero six. Who's that? Pauses are dangerous in radio. Yes. Pauses are dangerous. Eight six zero two zero six. Who are you? I'll put them on hold. They're probably just listening. Okay. Pastor Fern from uh, Norwalk, Connecticut, is on yes. the line with us. And uh, uh, Chris Chesanik is with us. Hey, Pastor Fern, this is right down your alley. We're talking about faith tonight. Yes, sir. Never complain, never complain about what you permit. Uh, no, sir. Do you, do you agree with me, disagree with me? What do you think? I agree wholeheartedly with you. But for the people that are getting into the message tonight about faith, a rich man might not have God in his life, but he might have faith in his money, faith in his family, faith in his stocks right. and bonds and, you right. know, whatever. They eat. But, you know, we got to go into the Word of God where it says, if I were to preach, let's say, for an example, in John 14, Verse 12, I would say verse 13, where it says, you can ask for anything in my name, Amen. and I will do it. Amen. Because of the work of the Son brings the glory to the Father. Yes. Yes. Ask anything in my name, and I will do it. Now, Amen. Pastor Dean, if I were to leave it like that, it sounds real, real nice, because it's the Word of God in the first place. And we're 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 actually asking God for something. So right. To ask to ask God for something, we gotta have faith. Amen. And how about how about that man that doesn't have a uh, God in his life, but has money and puts other things as part of his faith? And that was he might have faith, like I said, in his money or or stocks and bonds or in his business. Right. Well, if he would come, if we would come to the healing hands of Jesus. And he would just hear this message I just read. He sounds fine and dandy. But I would need to go back and tell him another. In other words, like saying, we got to look at the other side of the fence here. What I mean by that is we got to go, we got to go back to Matthew 6. Mm-hmm. Uh, the says, in Matthew 6, it says, all right, you ready for this? Mm-hmm. It says, and he will give you all you need from day to day if you live in him and make him. In other words, 
you got to seek the kingdom of God first. First, yes. Yes. Amen. You got to seek. You got to, in other words, by seeking the kingdom of God, you got to get into his word. Amen. To get to know his kingdom, to get to know him first. Right, then amen. Then will be added on to you. Because if I were to just leave the teaching where, back in John, where just ask for anything. Right. That sounds fine and dandy. But no, you got to look at the other side of the fence where it says, no, no, wait a minute. You've got to seek the kingdom of God first. Amen. That's right. So you can build your faith. Amen. Well, you know, in in uh, in the verse that you just uh, referred to, but uh, six thirty three, Matthew six thirty three, right. But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you that, as yes, well. Is, you know, yes, Jesus mm-hmm. Jesus encouraged His disciples to keep their focus on the kingdom of God. He assured them that their financial provisions and everything they needed would be produced through absolute focus on Him. Amen. Exactly. Amen. And uh, so, no, you know... There's in, no other way. There's, there's no, no other way. Other way. There, right, you're right. There is no other way. There is no other way. There's no other way. And, and there's no other way to build your faith... Uh, to ask God or, or, or to ask Jesus or the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, you know, there's no other way. Right, but exactly. Kingdom. Right. Because it says right there, it's, it, 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 you know, it, it, it's a given uh, that uh, not unless you seek his kingdom, then, you know, uh, it's like saying, well, uh, you know, Lord, uh, I knew you. I, I cast out demons and everything in your name. But then, you know, the Lord may say, hey, look, I never knew you. Mm-hmm. Right. right. That's right. Well, so you know, by Pastor Fern. Seeking his king, by seeking his kingdom, that's by knowing the Lord, by knowing mm-hmm. his word. Amen. And that's how faith goes. Amen. Pastor Fern, you know, listen, uh, I, I, you and I have uh, preached shoulder to shoulder for many years. Right. And... Uh, Christians today need to learn how to release the phenomenal energy that is created within us by the thing we call faith. Yeah. Because for God does not realize he doesn't release his energy without our exercising faith. We've got Correct. to exercise right. our faith. Uh, you know, I can remember some nights at Healing Hands of Jesus, some of the stirring reports that you uh, that you gave us on, on on times when you used your faith. Right. Uh, I mean, I can go back to the the time when you uh, somebody just uh, indiscriminately gave you a check for ten thousand um, dollars. I, I can remember stories. I mean, I can remember a lot of things that you you talked about during our services. Right. But right. the point the point that I'm trying to bring out is that it's not the money, and it, it. But I mean, we can go back to the story of of your son when when uh, there, there was trouble in the in the family and trouble in school, mm-hmm. and and you believe uh-huh. an angel a- actually intervened for your son. Right. Um, yes. In a, in a situation in high school. Every human on earth has a capacity for world-changing faith. Amen. Built into his, his structure. We, we're, we're, we're tri-parts. We're, we're, we have three parts. Spirit, Correct. soul, and body. And right. if body. you're a Christian, you're, 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 you are in this. You're in this. No one is excluded. So Correct. anyone who will accept it, can have a relationship with God that can change his world. Amen. And, right. and God gives Amen. to everyone who will receive him the measure of faith. It says it right in Romans 12, 3. The, uh, right. And this faith releases the blessings of God. Amen. Amen. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, yes, I'm going to uh, get a couple of other people here on the line. We've got Pastor Fern from Norwalk. We've got Chris from Bristol, Connecticut. Who is uh, 860206? Pastor Andrea. Oh, Pastor Andrea. God bless Hi, you. Hi, Pastor Andrea. Hello. 
Amen. <laughs> and you remember Pastor Fern? Yes. Well, Pastor Hi, Fern's Pastor on the Fern. line tonight. Pastor Fern Amen. is on the line tonight. And Amen. let's see, we have area code 313. Who is this? This is Barb from Dearborn, Michigan. Hi, well, Barb. Hello there. Hi. Nice, nice Hi, to you meet know, you. You know, for me, it's very, very simple. It's simply abiding in Christ. Amen. And he, delight, he delights to answer our questions. You know, I used to work in the intensive care unit at the hospital. And there, one night, the doctors were standing behind me. They were looking at a monitor. And they're saying, that's a dying heart. We're just going to send this man home to die. There's just no hope. And so, you know, after the doctors left the room, I went back there, and I laid hands on that monitor, and I prayed. And don't ask me what I prayed, but I prayed for the man because it was a long time ago. And he went home to die. Weeks later, this is a big, big hospital in the Detroit area. Weeks later, I'm down in the lobby, so I'm like probably two city blocks away from the unit that I was working in. Mm -hmm. And here comes this guy's wife chasing me across that lobby. And she's shouting. She says, he's still alive. They told me he was going to die. Can you explain this to me? (laughs) (laughs) Hallelujah. Beautiful. Amen. You know, God had a different idea. Right. And off she went. And, you know, but things like that, to me, it's just abiding in Christ. Another night. I was just talking to one of the aides. It was a midnight. We didn't have anything to do. So we're just talking about the Lord. And nothing was happening. Nobody was sick. Nothing going on. We're just sharing stories, okay? Well, about 2 in the morning, I got up to go down to the lab. And when I came back, there was like a mist, a cloud in that hallway. And as Mm. I entered that unit, it got thicker and thicker. And Mm. the aide felt it, too. We didn't see anything. But you could feel this presence. And, you know, I think the Lord just liked what we were talking about and came for a visit. Hmm. And I call that I call that our glory cloud. And she talks yes. about that to this day. That was wow. years ago. So Hallelujah. to me, it's just, just wow. live the life of, of abiding in Christ. You don't have to have a formula. Or you don't have to, you know, you don't have to be powerful. God is powerful. Just, Amen. just hang around him. Just Amen. hang around him. Amen. Well, you, so that's all you I have to say. I just love to, I love to share my little stories. Amen. Okay, that's, stay on the uh, panel, Bert, here, because we, we want your comment on a few other things. Well, okay, well, I'll shut your, up and let you talk now. Yeah. What, what you were doing, though, and I think uh, everything, you know, everyone who's on the panel, including Danny from Florida, who's on the air with us, um, uh-huh. is... Uh, let me ask you something. Let me, let me throw this around. Um, mm-hmm. A common question uh, that that I get, and well, I'll ask everybody to to chip in on this one. Uh, a common question that uh, I often get is um, those who believe in the Bible and accept the reality of the spiritual world. Mm-hmm. When is a problem spiritual, and when it is when is it psychological or neurological? Our problems are never not psychological, I suppose. Our mind, our will, our emotions, along with development issues, always contribute something to to the problem and are necessary for the resolution. At the same time, our problems are never not spiritual. Hmm. God is yeah. always present. Right. And it's it's never safe to take off the armor of God, is it? Right. No. It's correct. No. That's correct. And, you know, you know, I have possi- a doc- Go ahead. Go ahead, Bert. I I have a friend who's a, a psychologist. He's he's also a theologian, okay? He's got two doctorates. Okay, there you go. Uh, he counsels with people and he prays with them, and he gets wonderful results. But he doesn't use any drugs. He doesn't believe in Freudian anything. He says it doesn't work. It never did. He prays with them, and he invites the great physician to come and in, in minister Amen. to that person in a very Hallelujah. personal way. Amen. And people just re- people just received from him right, left, and center. 
So, now is it always spiritual? Well, one thing he says, he also does deliverance, okay? But he says not everything is a demon. And, for example, people that have been badly abused and traumatized, they might have multiple personality, okay? It's Mm -hmm. called um, dissociative identity disorder now. He says, well, that's a real condition. It's a, he said, you can't cast demons out of that. You have to, Jesus has to come and minister to them. Mm. So he does, right. he does both. And so it's just a nice mix. He's got a good understanding. But I tell you what, he doesn't give any pills. And that's, that is what he does. He may talk to you for a minute, but you're not going to get out of that office without some prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. So, there's my well, you know what? <laughs> oh, we've got a lot more to say on this program, and we've got plenty of time to say it. So I just want to uh, welcome everybody in the panel. We've got Pastor Fern Pichardo from Norwalk, Connecticut. Amen. Uh, Pastor Fern, by the way, speaks Spanish. And uh, we've got Chris Chisanek. We've got um, uh, area code 860206. I've forgotten who that is. That's Pastor. That's Pastor uh, Andrea. Oh, Andrea. Okay, Pastor Andrea. And three one three is Bert, and five six one is Danny down in Florida. And we yes, got hi Danny. Eight six zero oh, four eight zero. Who is this? It's Marie. Hello, Marie, Marie. Wallet. Hey oh, Marie. We, we have a good panel tonight, and our telephone number is six four six seven one six forty four ninety. I'm going to ask everyone on the panel to be. Uh, Especially careful with background noise. We're going to take a short break, and I will be right back. I want to ask something of Pastor Fern. I want to ask something when I come back from the break. Will God condone ignorance? Will God condone ignorance? Let's let's ponder that for just a couple of seconds. <laughs> Come closer to the radio. I've got some news for you. I've got a blog. Yes, a blog. But it's not going to be fun, you know, a lot of fun, without you. Would you do me a favor and follow me on Tumblr? T-U-M-B-L-R. It's a great social media. And and go to the blog that is entitled Notes of a Pastor. (laughs) Notes of a Pastor. We have a lot of fun. We've got great features like one-minute Bible study, one-minute prayer, prophetic messages called God is Whispering, and faith-filled messages that will enhance your walk with Jesus. I'm telling you, all you have to do is Google Notes of a Pastor, and it will direct you to Tumblr.com. Send me a message when you join the Notes of a Pastor family, and you know what I'll do? I'll send you something special as a thank you. Notes of a Pastor on Tumblr. Okay, we heard that one already. Well, you know what? The phones are ringing off the wall tonight. Oh, there it is again. <laughs> Holy mackerel. The phones are ringing off the wall. Oh, Pastor yeah. Fern from Stop Norwalk. I'm going to start. He's not working tonight, huh? <laughs> Pastor Fern from Norwalk. I want to start off with uh, with you, and then I'll pass this around the panel. And uh, You know, we're speaking of faith. And you know what? We've got people who are listening to us right now. And they're saying, these guys who are on the radio, they sound like they've got so much faith they could they could move every mountain. Well, how about <laughs> ignorance? Does God condone ignorance? i got to go back to his word, and i got to answer it with his word. Amen. Remember the Bible tells us that my people will... Because the lack of knowledge will what? They will perish. perish. Yeah, they will perish. Right? Hosea 4, 6. Hosea 4, 6, yeah. Lack of knowledge. Now, what knowledge are we talking about? The world's knowledge? No. I think we're talking about God's word knowledge. Amen. If you want to move that mountain with your faith, 
Well, what got you to that space? Correct. What got you to build that space for you to right. re- remove that mountain? Right. If it wasn't for if it wasn't for God's word. Correct. So to come to say that God, God may condone ignorance, I think so because He tells us that He He, he tells us right there in His, in his word. Right. My people will perish for lack of knowledge. Right. Now remember, well, uh, well, at least I remember when I was in religion, I had my Bible just sitting there. I never opened it. Because the day I became born again, I right. opened up the Bible. And the Bible took that veil from my eyes. Amen. And I was blinded by religion. Right. Well, that was that was that was my that was I didn't have that knowledge in God's word. Right. So I really believe God will say, Look, there's my word, open it. And we would pass by it and pass by it and pass by it. But then yet we would go to church and church and church. We didn't never knew about God or heard about him. I mean we heard about him but never got to know him. Mm-hmm. Pastor Fern, so can I I okay. I do believe God condones major. Mm. Pastor Fern, can I ask you something? Did you did you go to theology classes when you were young, like I did? Because I received the Lord's word, but I was receiving it through the Catholic faith. But in I, I called it the dead letter. I mean, I, I it was not the it was not the Spirit of God. But but uh, did you receive theology? Where I mean, I was required to go to these theology classes for years. Did you go through theologian classes like when you were younger? Um, no, what got no. me is just by basically going back into religion, mm-hmm. what the Catholic Church uh, did when my father died. Mm-hmm. I remember I was a six-year-old when my father died, wow. and having to go for him to have his mass uh, said before right. the priest in the Catholic right. Church, the, the 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 priest came out. Uh, after we, you know, I saw the the pop barriers bring down his coffin, and right, taking right. his coffin uh, up the stairs, getting to go into the church parish, and the priest popping in and says, "This man cannot come in here, and his and, and mass will not be said for him because, according to this uh, priest, my father had died uh, all of a sudden, and he didn't have time to repent." Uh, so we oh, ended up reloading his coffin into the hearse and taking oh, it back wow. and, and, and having to use the the funeral home parish again. And his fellow workers, because he used to work for the Southern Pacific Railroad, his, right. uh, his fellow workers set uh, a eulogy for him. Wow. So that, that hurt me. I remember, uh, Pastor Dean, I was six years old, and since then I used to say, and I guess it was really the Holy Spirit within me. I said, there's got to be something better than this. Amen. Right. Yes. Right. Even when I was sent to, even when I was sent to catechism classes, I, right. would, always go, I would always go to catechism saying, there's got to be something, there's got to be something better than this. Right, right. Me too. Exactly. Exactly. So, Pastor Andrea, I, Pastor Andrea has, uh, has uh, witnessed many times where uh, uh, people who have been destroyed for lack of knowledge, once they have received the word of knowledge, uh, mm-hmm. once they have received the good news of the Bible, uh, they're no longer cut off from the blessings of God, are they, Pastor Andrea? This is true. You know, in any land uh, where there is ignorance of God, in any land where uh, there is ignorance of His blessings, there's trouble. Any land, if you look, if you take a look, and I'm sorry, I hate to make example, and I'm not, I'm not preaching against anybody's religion or anyone's faith, but you know what? You've got to take a look at countries like Malaysia. I mean, th- that that country. Uh, I believe is cut off from the blessings of God for the lack for the lack of knowledge that they purposely put put aside. You take countries that uh, I mean I, I I believe that the United States of America has digressed terribly right. 
in the last six or seven years because what we have done is we have purposely, through the media, through our entertainment uh, venues, we have purposely uh, turned away from the, 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 the knowledge of God, and I believe that God has cut us off from some of his blessings as a nation. And I keep thanking the Lord. I thank the Lord for the remnant that exists. Amen. In this country. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Pastor Dean, there I'm with Pastor Fern. There are people people going to church Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. They're right. sitting in church, not getting the word of God, not getting fed, leaving Correct. going in church and coming out of church the same way. When you go to church, you get the word you're supposed to leave out different. You're supposed to leave out full, ready to take on Mm -hmm. what the week is going to bring you. Right. I have um, some people that come to me on Sunday for Bible class. They Mm -hmm. go to church and they're not getting them fed. They're not knowing the Word of God. Right. And when I start to sit down from the beginning of Genesis with them, they said, I never knew this. And I'm like, you've been going to church for so long. Right. You're not learning anything. And right. since this short period of time, and giving them what they need from God, They're, they can take on the storms of life now. It's not so, um, they won't fall down and just die. They right. can stand strong and take whatever life the enemy has. It's well, you know, the, the thing I, is, I, I tell you, I, I watched uh, Pastor Andrea, who was talking just now, yes. and her uh, her uh, cousin, Pastor Barbara, Barbara White, who was now living in Florida. Yes. And uh, they were ministering to the um, to the poor people and disadvantaged people of Hartford, Connecticut. Correct. And, right. and I'm going to tell you. Uh, it was absolutely amazing with uh, little money right. and great faith Amen. what Amen. they accomplished in their little section of Hartford, Connecticut. Amen. I mean, people, people would walk through the door and, and yes. uh, out of nowhere. Uh, money would come from nowhere. I mean, it was just an incredible, incredible week after week after week after week. Amen. And and you know what? Unbelief exists where people do not have sufficient knowledge. Mm-hmm. But knowledge brings release from ignorance, doesn't it? God's knowledge. Knowledge right, helps right. people know what they can receive from God. Now, Danny so in basically- Florida... You know, I know that for a fact that that for many years uh, you were in the gang, and and where was the gang, by the way, that you belonged to? Danny, are you there? He must have been cut he, off. He must he might have problems with his phone, Pastor. Do you remember he yes. had problems with the, his, his well, phone? Well, the, the thing is that uh, 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 let me ask you, let me ask um, uh, this lovely lady from uh, Barb. Uh, from Michigan, is it? Where do you live in? In, in if, is it Flint? No, Dearborn. No, I, I live in Little Arabia. <laughs> oh, wow! <laughs> right here in Dearborn. Yeah. You know what? Uh, we were talking yeah. about your city last night. Yes, we were. I we were about sure Flint, you were. Michigan. And uh, a lot Flint. of people. Ho- hold on, Chris. A, a lot on. of people do. Okay. okay. L- let me, uh, uh, Chris, just to hold on for just one second I didn't because say it's anything. doing it's something okay. to the signal. Um. You, didn't you have a referendum in the Dearborn, Michigan, about Sharia law? Right. You know, there was a um, a spoof column done saying that we were under Sharia law, and I am like anything but passive. So <laughs> I, mean, 
I got Hallelujah. several phone calls and got to the bottom of it. The the column that spread that rumor, it's it's a um, satire column, column, but it, it was written in such a way. They've gotten in trouble for this on other issues. It was written in such a way that that hit the internet and all the Christians for you know 48 states at least thought that uh, Dearborn was under Sharia law, not officially. I'm not convinced that they don't look the other way when it's practiced, okay? But officially, no. Does that help? Does uh, that, does that it, make it, sense? In, how is government, um, I mean, you have, what? what is the percentage of Muslims living in Dearborn right now? Do you know? You know, I don't know the exact percentage. We are the largest uh, Islamic community in the world outside of the Middle East. And I don't know the percentage exactly. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. I know, you know that they're very uh, active. That, they're that, very that active part of Michigan, politics. that part of Michigan, has always been very heavy in, in Lebanese descent. And uh, uh, well, it was Henry Ford. Uh, Henry Ford brought them in to work in his factory. Dearborn, mm-hmm. and I don't. I'm not saying this to offend people, but this is just the way it was. Dearborn was notorious for being a segregated community. There's just for years and years, there was not blacks here, okay? And it's also a uh, heavily steeped in the Masonic Lodge, okay? Oh, boy. So while they're busy, okay, while they're busy discriminating and being hateful, we got all of these errors moved in to work in the factory. And I really believe that what's going on in Dearborn today is a direct result of what those Masons did back in the day. Okay, it just it's it just is a heavily, heavily occultic town. Um, it has a high percentage of a gay community. It has mm-hmm. everything that you would expect to find where paganism has been left to run wild. Mm-hmm. Okay, does that make sense? But yeah. God has put me right in the middle of Dearborn. <laughs> and I pray for Dearborn. Boy, do I pray. Now, let me ask you something. How are the uh-huh. Christians doing over there? Do you know what? I could not tell you if there is a decent Christian church in the city limits. A really on fire uh, church. I, you know, there, I could. I hope I'm wrong, but I don't know where it is. Okay, so. Wow. Dearborn has been taken over, and I blame it on. And I, and I, if I'm offending the Masons out there, be offended because I mean it. This is paganism, and Amen. you know it's been steeped and steeped in all this occultism. Henry Ford was the 33rd degree Mason. My husband's uh, grandfather was his physician. He was a 33rd degree Mason. He was best friends with uh, Thomas Edison, another occultist. I don't know if he was a Mason, I, I'm assuming, but he followed the teachings of Madame Blavatsky very closely. Mm-hmm. Well, anyway, so we've got all of these occultists and pagans, and, and, and now we've, you know, we've been taken over by Islam. But God mm-hmm. put me right in the middle of Dearborn, <laughs> and I tell you what, there's one little, little house here in Dearborn that's just praying like crazy. I'm sure I'm not the only one. There are some good... Um, Ministries toward Muslims here in Dearborn, so you know we do what we can. But uh, so you're not uh, you're not discriminated against, are you? You know what? They treat me like a queen, and I I, I think it's I have favor from the Lord. I just I just do. Um, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I, I don't know what else to tell you. I went into the to the uh, Arabic restaurant. Well, it's good food. I mean, they've got great food. Anyway, it's a Muslim restaurant. And so as I was leaving, I was chatting to this little uh, Lebanese girl. And, uh, you know, I told her, I said, you know, we were just chatting. I said, I hope to see you in heaven. I gave her a tract. She grabbed my arm. And she said, oh, don't go. She said, I want to know the truth. Where do I go to find the truth? And I said, well, you know what? God sent me in here today to talk to you. And I tell you what, my name is Agar. But I told her Hagar because my name is the Greek form of Hagar. And I said, I want you to go home and look that up. God sent me in here to talk to you. And she said, oh, I've got goosebumps. I said, yeah, that's God. 
She said, you'll come back. I said, yeah, I'm back. Amen. We were surrounded by Muslims. Now, I'm here to tell you, I still have my head. Okay? <laughs> I have divine favor. That's, just, that's all I can say. You know, I just move around freely, and whatever I do, I do. And and uh, nobody nobody has ever mistreated me. Do they have a lot of ethnic battles in Dearborn? Um, um, no. There was a problem with the uh, Arabic festival with uh, some Christians that came in to uh, evangelize. And they, in fact, you can see that on Dearborn or on YouTube. If you'll type in stoning in Dearborn, you'll get it. And it was pretty awful. Um, so there has been some problems. Um, now let me ask you another question. Me. Never to me. How though. about how about the how about um, converting people from Muslim to Christian? Is has there any been has there been any notable uh, change in in uh, in doctrinal philosophies over in Dearborn? Well, you know what? There have been some ministers that have come in, and they're they're. We don't want to get into sloppy agape here and do this Chrislam thing, and mm-hmm. you know. So there's been some of that. I don't approve of that. You know. Okay. Now explain um, yourself when you say Chrislam. Chrislam. Uh, explain to the audience what that means. Okay, there's a movement that feels like uh, we should blend Christianity and Islam because, after yes. all, we're worshiping the same God. Well, I'm not. They're worshiping an idol. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> so I'm not going to blend all this stuff. Okay, so I don't go for that. There has been some of that. Um, there is a ministry that is the Assembly of God, and they're very, very active. And let me tell you what they've done. Um, Muslims don't trust, trust us. You know, I mean, you should just understand that coming out of the gate. You have to win their trust. So the pastor and his wife moved into their neighborhood, and, you know, they have dinners, and, and they got to know them, and that's how you really have to do it. You just can't come in like gangbusters. Right. And, you know, start screaming at them. You have to and, interact. You know, you've, you've got to win them. You've got to win yeah. their trust. Uh-huh. And see, that's that's easy for me. I'm a little bit older. We would go down to the bulk food store, and there they are with their three kids. And maybe we don't even be. We're not even able to speak because of a language barrier. Right. Uh-huh. I communicate. I communicate anyway. You know, mm-hmm. I I act like a grandma. And the kids respond, the moms respond. We share right. a little taste of whatever we're buying. You need mm-hmm. to interact with people, become Amen. part of their lives. Amen. So when you go into their stores, you just ask them about ask them about their families and oh, and did you get together for the holiday? Oh yes, well who was there and what did you eat? You've got a friend for life. Ask them right. about their food. You've got a friend for life. <laughs> but well, anyway, you know, you know it, 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 my dear sister, what is your first name again? I'm sorry. Barb, Barbara. Barb. Okay. Yes. Uh, you know, you're you're demonstrating right now how you release your faith. Amen. And 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 uh, I mean that takes a lot of faith to uh, to have to mix with Muslims every day of the week, especially in in view of all the uh, uh, the terrible news we hear. You know, it's always a steady stream of of sad events regarding radical Muslims. Um, yes. Now, it's it's up to us to learn how to release our faith, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We have got to. We have got to. You you said something just a second ago, which uh, I thought was vitally important, Barb. You said something to the tune of, "You've got to be gentle with them." Amen. In other words, yeah. you can't be like a Jehovah's Witness and knock on their door. Yeah, right. and 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 demand that they read a copy of Watchtower. Right. That is not going <laughs> oh, to help the cause here, is it? No. You oh, know what? Right. We all yeah. have our individual gifts. All right. Some people respond to the banging on the door. Some people respond to hellfire preaching. I'm a grandma. People respond to me as a grandma, so that's what Correct. I do. Okay. Right, right, right. I I meet people where I you know what people. We need to be ourselves. God mm-hmm. has given you everything That's you right. need to witness Amen. to the people that you encounter every day. Amen. You don't have to. Amen. You don't have to put on something else. Be yourself. Correct. 
Amen. I, amen. Pastor Fern, how do you release your faith in Norwalk, Connecticut? You know, we, you know, Beth, uh, Barb is dealing with people who were outwardly uh, of a different culture, but mm-hmm. the, the the danger of living in a culture like the one we're living in is uh, many of the people who are hidden enemies of the cross. Mm-hmm. Uh, they yeah. they they uh, they are enemies of the cross in a very secret and silent way. Uh, people who call themselves sometimes believers but really are not. Mm-hmm. Uh, how do you, right, you exactly. release your, your faith to people like that? You, it's like Sister Barbara was saying. You can't come just like a storm and try to you know. Right. Uh, right, right. Preach the word of God to them and say, "Look, you got to accept this. Uh, you, you know, blah blah blah, and God is this." And yeah. no, no, no. Uh, you know, the Holy Spirit will tell you, Amen, how to approach somebody. Correct. The Holy Spirit texts on you when and what to say to people. That's right. But you got to remember that. You also got to remember what the the Holy Spirit or the Word of God says that some. You know, there's a lot of people out here that the cross is very foolish to them. Oh, Jesus. The cross is yep. very foolish to them. I mean, oh, and we can say just about, uh, you know, compare the, the population of the world compared to Christians. I mean, uh, I'm, uh, there's 6 billion people in the world. I'm thinking, I'm thinking only about 2 billion are Christians, and the rest is, is non-Christian people. So... You know, that's a lot of that's a lot of people in the world that the cross is foolish to them. Mm-hmm. But for you to uh, release your faith is you got to rely on the Holy Spirit when He talks to you. Amen. You got to rely how to hear that voice. Amen. To say to say to a person or try to uh, tell them about the Word of God to that person, uh, you just can't do it on your own. Right. Amen. Gotta, Amen. Like, Amen. For that's, example, that's... You, you might be at work and, and then you hear a person that's a Muslim or a Hindu or a Buddhist, and you kind of sometimes keep your mouth shut, and then later on the Holy Spirit will tell you what to say to them. Right. 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 You'll be building some trust first, and then uh, they yes. can see what your witness is like. Listen, okay. I just want to welcome everybody. Welcome everybody to uh, Pastor Dean Live. And I also want to tell everyone that um, our telephone number is 646 716 4490. We have a fantastic panel, and I am taking Patriot Greg's advice. And uh, he, 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 he passed along some advice to us last night. He said, Listen, schedule the, the show for two hours, and so in case you get a real good show going, you can right. uh, you can keep on going, which is what we're going to be doing tonight. So tell our telephone number is six four six seven one six forty four ninety, and we thank Patriot Greg for giving us that suggestion last night. Listen, Amen. I want to ask, first of all, I have to think I have to welcome somebody who's new to the panel eight six zero three five seven. Who's that? Michael Lakai. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hello, Mike. Uh, Michael Pastor Fern is here. Chris is here. Uh, Pastor Andrea uh, Barb from Michigan, Dearborn, Michigan. Uh, you're here, and uh, Marie Olette is here. You know, you know what you guys are telling me, and, and correct me if I'm wrong. It, it, it's up to us to learn how to release our faith, isn't it? Uh, to to learn how to move with God, and it, we have to learn how to say. Lord, I know you can and will do it. I'm as good as Abraham. I'm as good as Moses or anyone else. I'm a child of the king, and I'm going to release the mighty power that is available to me through faith. And Pastor Fern uh, really uh, brought up a good point, and I, I believe that's what Barb was uh, expounding upon, and also Pastor Andrea, that we, we've got to listen to the Holy Spirit. Amen. We've got, to, we've got to really listen to the Holy Spirit. You know, and, and here again, when, when somebody says to me, we've just got to abide in Jesus, what you're, you're saying to me is also when it comes to faith, mm-hmm. that 
and I'll ask uh, Reverend Michael Lakai to uh, comment on this. We really have to accept what God says as absolute truth, don't we? Yeah. Amen. Amen. I think, um, like early in my walk, um, you know, <clears throat> the different churches and ministries that I was involved with were always trying to tell people how to go street evangelizing, and and it, it gets gets kind of um, it, it's kind of scary to do stuff like that because uh, you know what, like, like what Barbara had said earlier, what might work for one person won't work for another. Right. So uh, the the one key factor that has been missing in so many of these teachings on how to street evangelize is is how to be led by the Holy Spirit because right. uh, there there are things that that people have giftings or callings for that others yes. don't and going door to door you know uh, evangelizing that way just that 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 was never my cup of tea and and I, I was thrown into a, a, a situation where we were. Uh, evangelizing a neighborhood by giving away um, a free copy to the Campus Crusade for Christ video uh, called, you know, the Jesus movie. It was a phenomenal mm-hmm. movie. It was a phenomenal uh, program that they put together, but I've just never been one, you know, that's like a door-to-door salesman, and, and it just, uh, you know, you're knocking on people's doors, and they just got home from work, and whether they really want to hear it or not, um, it, it you immediately get like your you know defenses up because you're invading their their time you know right, and so right. um i never i never felt led to that i just felt like you know well it's what the church is doing and this is what they want me to do so i'll do it but uh really turned me off to evangelizing and it wasn't until several years later uh that you know the lord started growing growing in me like uh, astronomical leaps and bounds until he started, you know, giving me a, a boldness and a confidence to do evangelizing, but, you know, more of like on the spot, like no planning, no prepping, just, okay, mm-hmm. talk to that person that's walking by you right now. Mm-hmm. And and so, uh, you know, that's that we used to nickname that Jehovah Sneaky, you know, you're just <laughs> walking down minding your own business and all of a sudden God's just going to tell you to go talk to somebody and next thing you know that person's weeping because whatever you just said to them, Right. Uh, uh, minister to an, a specific need in that person's life, and um, and so you know there's others that are called to to you know to 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 go deeper and not just get a conviction going, but to to draw them in and 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 Amen. start a, a discipleship. And you know there's right. so many different aspects, so many different levels. So what works for one person may not work for another. For no, exactly. So you know what exactly. that, we can't allow that motivation. To, to guide us, it, the motivation needs to be the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Exactly. Amen. Yeah, that's what. I, that's why I mentioned that you know you you got to look to the Holy Spirit and learn how to hear His voice. There's Amen. one word that we're mi- there's one word that we're missing here that we should ask to the Holy Spirit when it comes down to this. Please mm-hmm. give us wisdom. Amen. Amen. That's the key, Amen. That's the key word for Amen. the Holy Spirit to give us. Wisdom, Amen. Mm-hmm. Yes, and That's He'll do that key. if you ask Him. You know, Amen. now, yes. w- you know, when you walk Can in I the faith something? realm, uh, when you walk in the fel- faith realm, uh, you you kind of remove yourself from this world, don't you? Uh, mm-hmm. What the you know what the yeah. eyes see and the ears hear and the fingers touch, mm-hmm. and you when you when you walk in the faith realm, you, you're really placing yourself into another world. Which the world of faith, and and in that world, I think we've got one thing we really, and I'm sure that there are people listening to us right now, and they're and they're they're down deep. They're saying, "I want to have this kind of faith that they're talking about." Oh, and, hallelujah! And, and you know, if you want this kind of faith that we're talking about, if you want to change your world, if you want to change the world around you, you you. The thing, and I think the basic requirement. Well, I know the basic requirement, and I want you to comment on this, Barbara. You can you can kick in here too. Um, the basic, the real basic requirement that you're going to have to to you're just going to have to accept the word of God, or you're not going to make it in faith. Yeah. And, and you've got to know you've got to know beyond beyond any shadow of a doubt that God is truth. Amen. And he's not a liar. 
That's right. If God says it, it is just that way. Correct. Do you agree, Barb? Yes, but you know, it comes with experience. It's like a muscle, okay? The more you exercise that muscle, the, right. the stronger it's going to get. I still go back to, I'm not a theologian, okay? With what I know in 50 cents, you're not going to get a cup of coffee anywhere. But <laughs> I tell you what, this should be as natural as breathing. Amen. Mm-hmm. It just should be. And I, I start with a premise. And I start with this. If mm-hmm. God has allowed you to come across my path, then he wants you saved. And all I have to do is just be willing. That's all God Amen. requires of any of us. Just be willing. And he'll Amen. fill your mouth. And he'll, he'll fill your, your mouth with scripture that you, you thought you'd forgotten. Mm-hmm. He'll take over. This oh. is easy, folks. You just have to step out. Amen. Amen. There, well, that's right. Step up would, you, would, yes. would you say this? And again, I'll ask from anybody who wants to comment. Uh, would you would you agree with the statement that some religions are so full of lies that people are in complete bondage? Yes. Oh, that's 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 been known for ages. Uh, because if you really look at since time has existed and since humanity has mm-hmm. existed in this world mm-hmm. a lot of nations have been rich in materials but had gods not a god had gods and where they are they now for example the Egyptian government the Persian government the, right. the Greek government uh, but then yet who still stands who has a god the, the nation of Israel you know Amen. who still stands that's right. So if you look, you look at, 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 like I say, go back and look at all these nations that've been rich in material rights and material, but if you know they had gods, uh, yep, yep. the sun got, the moon got, the astrology mm-hmm. got. Uh, That's correct. Name it. The water god. So what, they, they were, the yeah. water god, uh, right. uh, you know. Uh, so where do they stand now? They don't exist. You know, now let me, let me tell you a story, uh, Pastor Dean. And for an example, take the, the, the take the nation of Mexico. Mm-hmm. Uh, born and raised in Texas, mm-hmm. my mother being Hispanic, I'm Mexican, and my father being Italian. Uh, we will see all these people in Mexico praying to this virgin they call the Virgin of Guadalupe. Mm-hmm. And just about just about every Mexican household in Mexico, if you go into Mexico, Mexico today, that virgin is in their household, mm-hmm. and wow. they pray to this virgin. Wow. Okay, and if you look under this virgin, they have a picture of this virgin. She's standing on top of a, the moon, and then underneath she's got the stars. Well, that virgin has to do, from what I heard on, on a teaching that I did, that has to do with astrology. So this oh, wow. virgin, this virgin that they pray to, is nothing but another god. Wow! And that's why the nation of Mexico is in the the way it is now. Correct. Right, right now, right. you go to Mexico, it is run by drug cartel. And let me tell Absolutely. you, as an ex police, as an as an ex police officer, I know what goes down there. It's a cat right. and mouse game. Every day, I would go to work, and I used to see. I used to see all, everything that the devil has built mm-hmm. around that nation because they pray not not to the Lord, but they pray to a God. Right, you know? right, and right. And that's, that's even, in, in, that's even in, their, in, their, in, their, uh, in their parishes and, mm-hmm. and you know, in their religion. So they, they well, pray if, to you're, if you're really going to operate in the realm of faith, if you're really going to operate in it, uh, you cannot operate uh, in the... Uh, in, in man's tradition, you've right. got to operate, and you you you've got to accept God's word as absolute truth, and right. and and the problem is that you you've got to do that. And that's not the problem, but it, it, like uh, Barb was saying, you've got to exercise your muscle even in the midst of contradictory circumstances. Amen. You know the three the three Hebrew children, uh, what they did in the fiery furnace was they stuck to God. Even 
under contradictory circumstances. You know, they could have they could have screamed and they could have yelled. Well, you know, God, you did this to me. You allowed this to me, and I'm I'm mad. And blah, 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 blah. But d- yeah. even Daniel in a den of the hungry lions. In right, both those right. cases, it, they, yeah. their faith, their faith in God, actually, and what happened here is, and this is what the beautiful thing is about faith, is right. that faith in God changes what the natural eyes saw. Amen. Their faith in exactly. God changed what the natural ears heard. Right, they right, had right such there. a beautiful relationship with God that that uh, they knew him as absolute truth. Wow. Amen. Pastor and, Dean, you you know, I just wanted to share something uh, that the Lord was telling me. You know, our education system, for example, in New London, Connecticut, just recently, they just passed uh, the school, the district, or the county of New London, but particularly in the New London area, the schools in New London, they are now following two uh, Islamic or Muslim holidays. They just recently passed it because of mm-hmm. one parent making an uproar there. And I was thinking about this, and uh, the Lord, and it really starts with our children. I mean, I just cannot, I just cannot fathom how one lady made a big uproar just to get two holidays in the New London, you know, school district, and it just shows you, you know. <laughs> You know, I, I don't know. I just, I just, I just believe our ch- our children have to be breded and brought up in God. There's just no other way to say it. There's just no other way to say it. And our education system here is not one of the best in the world. Matter of fact, we're 20th ranked as far as our education and practical, fundamental education. There's a lot of like Vietnam's ahead of us. What does that tell you, too? We're not investing. The proper th- they're saying we're investing in education. I don't believe it. We're not truly investing in education. It's Let the me wrong ask you something. How, how many how many people do you know, Pastor Andrea? And I'll get back to you, Chris, in just a second. How many people do you know, Pastor Andrea, who have the relationship with God that Moses had? Mm-hmm. Not too many. Not too many at, at all. I have a testimony of something that happened today, dealing with faith. My blood pressure was checked today, and it was very high. So I was concerned about it, but I prayed, and I said, I'm not going to receive this. God, you said I'm healed. I said, I'm not going to receive this report. So I went and later on I checked it again. It came down wow. a little bit. So the third time I went and checked it hours later, it was normal. I said, Thank "Wow, you. Amen, Thank you, Jesus," because I would not receive that. And my and our faith we go from faith to faith in different levels right. of faith in our life. So my faith said, I trust God. Amen. I trust God in his word. Amen. I'm not going to allow this in me. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. That's, Amen. That's, right trusting, wow. that's trusting God even even with, a, with contradictory circumstances. Hallelujah. Right. So I'm going to go to Barb in Dearborn, Michigan, <clears throat> and I'm going to mm-hmm. ask her a question. I started this program out, Barb, by saying never complain about what you permit. Uh, I started the program by saying your circumstances are not permanent and that you have permitted your present circumstances or they would not exist. Do you agree with that statement or disagree with it? Well, (laughs) I'm I'm putting you on the spot. No, I, see, I, I'm really not into the faith uh, doctrine per se, okay? Mm-hmm. I do exercise my faith, but I don't, oh, how do I put it? I'm more apt to use the scripture against Satan mm-hmm. Amen. Than, to demand, than to demand results of God. Like, mm-hmm. for example, mm-hmm. the blood pressure thing. Mm-hmm. I might have said something like, Look, 
I bind you, and I get out of here and go to where Jesus tells you to go because Amen. the Bible said I was healed. That's Amen. Trespassing. You're trespassing. Amen. That's you know, right. And I might get my little sword of the spirit and point to the door. I mean, Amen. So, uh, well, that's the same page. I don't know. On. I just approach yeah. it a little bit differently. I really mm-hmm. think that mine that's okay. is more of a. And I have to go back to what I said originally. Abiding. Yeah. If Amen. You're abiding, you see, you have found a way to use God's truth. Amen. To enter the realm of faith. And uh, trust me, you know, from what I understand and what you're saying to me, and you're giving me faith just listening to you. Uh, yes. Because, and number one, what you're doing is working. Number two, uh, you have found a method, and, 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 and the method, number one, is accepting what God says is absolute truth. Amen. And that and then too, using your personality that God gave you and the gifts that God gave you to 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 uh, to uh, to express it. Well, you know what? That's funny because my friend tells me he said you're just like a bulldog, and I go, oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> what it is is I deal with a lot of spiritual warfare. Right. I truly believe, Dean, that every witch within 48 states, and the only reason the other two states hasn't come, they're too far away, have felt the need to come and talk to me. I mean, I run into it constantly. <laughs> so I am in active spiritual warfare. Allie, Amen. God bless you. God and, bless and, you. And I tell you what, you get to know your Savior. You know, Amen. one time I went, after work, I went uh, over to a nurse's house after work, and we're sitting out in the, and I hate to admit this, it's a funny story. I've got to add it in. I was backslidden at the time, okay? So we were out there on the picnic table having a beer. And uh, so here I am, you know, a little bit looped on beer and, or whatever, and she starts, she was from the south of France, and she started talking to me about some black witchcraft, I mean black, that she has experienced uh, in the south of France. And, well, I just knew, oh, I'm in over my head here. And uh, she starts manifesting, okay? Well, thank God that the Lord is gracious. He jumped in with both feet, and we handled it. He did. Wow. I, I was in no shape, too. Right, right, And right. he pulled that situation out, and that was a smack on the face to me. I straightened wow. up really quickly after that. Yes. But you know what? He will do it for you. We don't have to force this thing. <laughs> no, right. right. Exactly. Whatever he sends us, we have got everything we need to Amen. accomplish whatever j- job Amen. he puts us And like I said before, he will bring you Amen. whoever. And then Amen. you're ready to deal with that. But I have to tell you my favorite story. And I don't know the, the, the names of any of these people, but there was a like an evangelist in sort of the Old West or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he was having a meeting in, in a room, and it was adjacent to a bar. And so the guys in the bar could hear him preaching, and so he, they were mocking. Well, he heard them mocking. Well, he came down off of that, that pulpit. He marched over to the bar and beat the snot out of them. And then they had church. <laughs> and, you know, and, <laughs> and those men got born again. And I love that story. You, we all have different gifts, and some of them oh, are violent. <laughs> <laughs> that's our, that's Was this a true story, Barbara? <laughs> this is a true story? I read it somewhere years ago. Oh, it was supposed oh. to be a true story, yes. It's so it's God, did not make us, God did not make us to be a pack of wimps. You no, know, that's we're correct. Warriors. Correct. correct. No. Okay? And correct. my Jesus is not a feminine. He's a, no. He's a, he's a, a carpenter. He, Amen. His frame was muscular. I tell that's you what, right. he went into that temple and he wrecked the place. That's right. right. Oh, so, I mean, wimp. he's not a wimp, and we Christians need to to see who we serve. That's he's right. a bold Jesus Christ. He's very bold. Jesus is very bold. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, and that, that, because yeah. we are in Christ, we are Am- too. Amen, sister. How big is Dearborn, the city uh, population, and how far is it from Detroit? We're right next door to Detroit. Okay, and so I you have a lot of the <laughs> problems of being in in the in the. You know, in the metropolitan of Detroit, I guess the metropolis of Detroit. So you got a lot of the yep. problems of Detroit, you know, with the bankruptcy and the whole nine yards, everything that right. goes with the, the situation. So, uh, and how large is Dearborn again, the, as far as just the, oh, the city? 
I, you know, I don't know the exact uh, numbers, the population. I'm going to say mm-hmm. it's, oh, you know, maybe 15 square miles. I don't know. I really don't know. It, it, okay. It's pretty mm-hmm. big. It's, it's not huge like Detroit. But mm-hmm. I have to tell you something. You know, Detroit is in ba- bankruptcy. Correct. And the Muslims intend to buy up Detroit, and they'll get it for $10 a house. And they mm-hmm. intend to change it into the western Mecca. They'll make like a, a Muslim Disneyland there. And boy, I'm praying about that. that so you're well, saying they're serious? making another oh, UAE? Yeah. You're well, making Michael, it like another Michael, UAE. Uh, hold on, Chris. Chris, hold on. <clears throat> Michael, what do you think about that? Um, it's it's distraughting. Um, I, I've heard similar similar issues uh, to that to that nature. Um, I, I was wondering, Barbara, um, how how close is Saginaw to to Dearborn? Mm. Sagan, okay. Look at your left hand. Okay. okay. Uh, Michigan is the mitten. Dearborn okay. is down at the base of your thumb, at that knuckle. Okay. Saginaw uh-huh. is up in the curve of the thumb, you know, where it uh, the thumb joins in with the rest of the hand. Saginaw okay. is in that bay. That's a so bay. That's, that's Saginaw isn't bay that right Haran? There. Isn't that Lake Haran there? Right there is Saginaw Bay, but Lake Huron would then be the... Um, Oh, okay. The, lake, it is. The, okay. the Great Lake, but the Bay yeah, is Saginaw Bay. So okay. Saginaw Bay is probably 100 miles. North? Mm-hmm. All right. The, re- the reason I ask is I, I know of um, evangelists that, that go to Saginaw Valley Community Cur- Church, and I've heard some wonderful stories of uh, radical conversions of mm-hmm. Islam to, to Christian. Um, wow. Mm-hmm. And so, mm-hmm. I, you know, they're they're... I don't. I haven't really heard much from them in, in I would have to say, the past year. Uh, but they they were, you know, strategically uh, having like prayer teams that were going to be going down into the Dearborn area. I just I haven't heard anything. So I just know that there are people throughout the nation that that are praying um, for Dearborn, oh, well, and so oh, that's wonderful to hear. Yes. Yes, that it, that really is, and we do need prayer. Um, it is a mission field. You know, I've had so many people. You know, I don't know any better. I've just lived here forever, and so I've had so many people say, "Oh, you've got to, you've got to get out of there. Aren't you worried?" And I'm going, "This is my home. That's I mean, right. I'm supposed to get up and leave my kids. Either, either God either takes care of me here, or he, or he doesn't." You know, right, right. and then you know somebody was saying, "Oh, well, you know that you're going to get your head cut off." I said, "Look, no, no. then I get a white robe. That's not a bad deal." <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord Jesus! I, you know, <laughs> praise, praise God. That's, amen. Put amen. Amen. That's right. And it's, amen. And it's not to turn tail and run. You're so, a remnant. You're a remnant of Christ in Dearborn, Michigan. Remember that. You well, are I'm a remnant. Okay, well, I'm, I'm going to ask most everyone. Most of my neighbors to... think I'm something else, but no, hey. no, no, no. no. <laughs> I'm going to ask everyone to hold on. We're going to take a little bit of a break here. One of our subjects tonight, or the subject tonight, is faith. And I'm going to come back, and I am going to ask Pastor Fern the following question. Either, uh, or that I'm going to ask Pastor Fern if he agrees with this premise or not. Either accept the present without complaint or make a decision to use your faith and attract a miracle from God. We'll let, let, let have Pastor Fern and we'll let the whole panel discuss that, that statement in just a moment. This is Pastor Dean live at 10, and we're going to get back to our panel. We're talking about faith tonight. Now, here's something not too many ministers will say. I don't care if you give to this ministry or not. Naturally, I would love for you to do that. But I want to give you a message right now. And it happens to be about giving. Not to this ministry, but to your church. But to the missions. But to God's kingdom. Listen, my friend. God's greatest need is to be believed. His greatest pain is to be doubted. It says in Luke 6.38, Give, and it will be given to you. 
a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap, for with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Give. Give to your local church. Give to missions. Give to the poor. Give. And I am promising you that God will give back to you. Tonight we're talking about expectation. We always talk about expectation. That's what faith is. Giving God what he wants and expecting something in return. Give. You don't have to give to this ministry, but give to a ministry that serves you. Give to the church that serves you. And give to God's kingdom. In Jesus' name, you will be rewarded in this life and the next. By golly, the phones have been ringing tonight, and we thank God for that. We thank God for that. This is Pastor Dean live at 10 o'clock. We've got people from all over the country on the panel tonight, and it's still not too late for you to join us and ask questions and participate. 646-716-4190. Give us a ring and... uh, 4490, excuse me. uh, 646-716-4490. Okay, Pastor Fern, I'm going to put you into action tonight. Again, I, I'm, I'm putting you guys really on the spot, and uh, uh, he, here's my, uh, my contention. I, I said this in the beginning of the program. Either accept the present without complaint, or make a decision to use your faith and attract a miracle from God. What do you think, Pastor Fern? I think, going back to the Word of God... <clears throat> To find out to to find out what our real foundation is, of mm-hmm. course, you, you need to go back to the Word of God. Right. You got to go on that on that. Having to say that, I got to go back on His promises. Amen. If I were to believe God that He would do this or that or whatever, and it's in the Bible, it's His promise to His children. If I'm going to be an heir, Amen. And part part of His family, that means. All his promises, including miracles, That's right. are mine. Amen. Now a lot, of, now a lot of people in healing, they say, "Well, I don't believe God heals nowadays." <laughs> well, it says in Hebrews thirteen eighty, it says that He's the same yesterday, same. today, yes. and forever. Right. Right. Amen. That's in Hebrews thirteen eight. Right. Well, what what I would say to somebody that tells me, "Well, you know, God doesn't heal nowadays," that was that was when He was walking in His ministry. Well, I would say this. Says the existence of this world, evil has been upon this world. Evil has evil has been around, has been around in the heavens and uh, the principalities that we face uh, sometimes, you know, in this in this life of ours. Right. And say so if evil can exist since day one. Till the day, how come God cannot heal since day one till the day? Right. So I say, if the God, if, if, if the, the Word of God says to me that that is according to His Word and according to His promise, yes, I shall accept that. Amen. And, and run to the bank with that. Amen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. I, Those are, I, you know when when you know Pastor Dean when he died in the cross. The last words that he said was, it, it is, is finished. finished. That's right. He said he done, he, you know what he was saying to us? I've done everything. I Amen. left you all the tools. I left you all the tools. I left you all the weapons. I left you everything to fight. Even though sometimes today I really believe we got to defend the gospel. We got to yes. stand up for the gospel and defend yes. the gospel. Uh, yes. Like right now, I believe it was Chris was saying that about uh, a, a Muslim lady went into the school district. Well, if she went for her for her belief, how come mm. we cannot do the same that's, thing? That's right. Amen. Amen. That's correct. Well, Amen. Well, we because we're, 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 ro- we're, ro- we're, ro- we're rolling over and playing dead sometimes. 
Right. And right. And 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 we've taken. I I believe that, uh, and I'm I'm guilty of it myself. We have taken Christianity as a given for this country. You know, we we just uh, years ago when I was a kid, I just well, you know, listen, this is a this is a Christian country. Nothing nothing's ever going to change it, and uh, I, we don't have to worry about. Uh, you know other religions taking over and and uh, well you know what when we when we fell asleep the devil walked right in the door you know i want to ask um i want to ask the panel and 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 pastor andrea too i want to get her in this conversation a little bit uh do you believe you can have a relationship with god pastor andrea so that you can speak and it will be done You mean call those things be as they were? Say that again, I'm sorry. Ask me the question again. Can you have a relationship with God so that you can speak and it will be done? Yes. And Amen. what was the Bible uh, Bible verse that you were just referring to? Call those things into existence. Right. When I speak, there's power, life, and death in the tongue. So when I speak and believe with faith, those things come to pass. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so... Uh, I'm Michael Lakai. Uh, if, if you agree with Pastor Andrea, uh, you can speak for yourself a better job or a better relationship in your home, and and it will have to be because you speak with force or and, and a power greater. <laughs> I think that faith is power more powerful than the atomic bomb. But that's my editorial for tonight. But uh, can we speak our future in your eyes? Uh, I, I believe so. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I think I think when it comes to my own personal life, I don't know why, but I have doubt. I believe it more for others than myself. But I've been listening yeah. to a lot of teachings and readings that it's it's finally starting to sink into my head that I've yeah. got to be relentless. And what happens is, you know, I might be I might be on fire for a couple of days or whatever, but then troubles start coming up and I start losing my focus and I stop doing what I know I should be doing mm-hmm. and I end up getting back into the same position uh, mm-hmm. uh, and so like I, I just I just got a, a a message emailed to me yesterday from Kenneth Copeland Ministries where he said you keep speaking forth his word and it's got to come forth because Amen. God doesn't lie and we yes. just got to get that through our head sometimes you know well, you know, I'm, I'm asking I'm asking you guys some loaded questions, and and you know, I, I just want to kick in here myself. I I truly believe that God wants us to have a reserve of strength that that only He can give us. He wants us to be reliant upon Him for everything, and He has that strength that only He can give. And once we can get that, like you just said, into our brains. Uh, and, and once we find out that man cannot give us the strength that God can, uh, of course, almost, and, and, and the reason it's, you know, it, the only reason that you have a hard time understanding this, uh, Reverend Mike, it, 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 we all have a hard time with this, is because yes. almost everything in our society is against it. Correct. Our, materi- our materialistic society says, trust in what is is material and and so we've got to go back to the bible and we've got to say well you know god spoke the universe into being without anything material didn't he right he spoke of the planets were he created them with the power and the strength of his mouth and and i believe that what does faith god when we have faith that pleases god that moves things for us. Our yes. faith moves stuff out the way. Amen. Can I ask a question? I When I was a kid, I used to have a set of world book encyclopedias, and they were they was old set. I, I believe they were from 1968. And I remember 
there used to be illustrations in the encyclopedia, like, let's say, like the human body, where there would be like six to eight different cellophane, excuse me, cellophane pages that as you look at it through the top, it'll have the whole body, but then as you start peeling through one of the cellophane pages, the different layers, it'll start showing like the blood vessels, and then you flip it back, and it'll show the muscular system, and then, you know, guys, is everybody on the same page with me? You understand what I'm saying? Right, the nerves, right. Okay, to me, and, and... the, the Lord struck me with this earlier, Pastor Dean, about a show last week where that guy came in and was very adamant about God is not in control, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And, right, and right, right. God right. struck me so hard tonight, and he said, the next time you get on the show, make this point. And so this is what I, want, I wanted to throw out, because I, it's not only relevant to what that man said a week ago, but I think what we're talking about tonight. Right. The Word of God is like that. We can't look at something just at face value, because Correct. if we look at it just at face value, the the point where he was saying that you know that Satan is the god of this world, um, that's correct to a point. But if we start looking at the other layers, the, the Bible is very clear that that the things of the spirit, the things of the kingdom, Amen. are of a higher realm than the things Amen. of the flesh. Amen. And Satan may be ruler of this world of the flesh but the right. flesh, flesh is destined to die god yeah. has ordained that that we pray thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven that we are to draw the kingdom into the earth and so god's still in control of the spirit things he may be allowing satan to rule the, the things of the flesh but he's still in control of the things of the spirit he still has a remnant he still has a plan he still has a word planted in the earth and in each one of us so he is still very much in control he, satan may be in control of the things of the flesh but everything of the spirit realm is still in control by god and so i i i know that i know when i'm ministering or i'm operating in the spirit i can see those things like that but then when it comes to my own life, I get stuck on the one page. And all I see are the problems, and how am I going to put the fires out, and I forget to apply the other five layers on top of that. I just focus on those things. And, and it's, it's taking me longer than it should, but at least I could say, praise God, I could see where I've been wrong and where I need to grow and where, I'm, you know, where I am stretching my faith that I can start you know, speaking the word, and whether I see it today or tomorrow, that I still keep speaking the word over the situations that I'm facing, and I, I need to stop allowing the distractions to get in. And I think that's a word for each one of our panelists tonight, that, you know. that there are certain areas in our life that are not where they should be, yeah. and we've been tolerant for whatever reason, whether we even acknowledge it or not, but for whatever reason, that problem has been in my life or in our life because we have not done anything to actively get rid of it in the spirit. We can't get rid of nothing in the flesh. But if we call God's word upon that situation in the spirit, it has no, no other choice but to usher in what God said. And so we need to, to look at things not just at face value, but know that God, the only way Jesus was able to live a sinless life is because he allowed the, 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 the sinful nature, the, the flesh, to be uh, um, subservient to the spirit. That's right. That's right. And, and that's, he lived that's by why, the spirit that's why the as a man, but he allowed his flesh to be put in check by his spirit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's why the 40 days in the wilderness was so important. That's Amen. why God instructed Amen. him to go into the wilderness so that that could be very firmly established that his spirit was the boss of his triune being. Now, I just want to bring something up, and I, 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 I think this will be a, a good kicker. You know, remember in, in um, uh, Mark chapter 5, uh, remember the situation with Jairus? Mm-hmm. Uh, while Jesus, I'm going to read the scripture here. Uh, While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? Overhearing what they said, Jesus told him, don't be afraid, just believe. Verse 37 says, 
He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, Why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. Now, I want to I want to use that that quote from Jesus right now. Listen to me folks. If you're if you take the quote of Jesus, why all this commotion and wailing the child is not dead but asleep. If you take that quotation and you use it in the carnal, Jesus is lying. Because that girl was physically dead. But when he went to the door of Jairus' house and there was all the commotion and the wailing, Jesus switched from the physical to the spiritual. And he spoke the truth spiritually. That child is not dead but asleep. That's what we have to do. And, you know, Barbara was uh, from Michigan was saying, well, the, the, you know, the, uh, the, the machinery, the uh, monitors were saying that this poor guy was dead and that he was to go home to, or, or literally, you know, figuratively speaking, he was, he was on, on his way to a quick death. And she laid hands on the uh, instruments and she rebuked the devil. Well, Barbara switched from the physical to the spiritual. And you, you know what? What came first, the spirit or the physical? What came first, the spirit or the physical? What made, the spirit made the physical, correct? Yes. Okay, so if the spirit made the physical then the spirit is the daddy of the physical, which uh-huh. means that the spiritual laws take precedence over physical laws. And that's what Jesus did at Jairus' house. He did not speak an untruth. He was switching from the physical to the spiritual. And when we get into contrary or contradictory circumstances, that is exactly what we have to do. I was talking to somebody today at Walmart, and I was telling them, I said, you know what, uh, you're, th- you're probably going to think I'm crazy, but if you let me explain to myself, uh, explain myself, um, I, I want to tell you, I said, you can talk to things. And we got interrupted, and I couldn't, I couldn't continue the conversation. But yes, we can talk to things. What did Jesus talk to? He talked to that fig tree, didn't he? Yes, he did. He talked yep. to the water to calm down, didn't he? Yep. He he when he saw a physical situation, he went immediately into the spiritual. And Amen. the spiritual always takes precedence. Pastor Dean, over what the physical. what happened? What happened when the Lord uh on the third day he rose again? Death could not hold him holy resurrection of Jesus was an example, a perfect example of how this Holy Spirit is more powerful than anything carnal, anything of physical. Right there is a perfect example. And remember, we are God's new creation. We were, we were meant to be God's new creation from the very get-go in the Garden of Eden, but we are now God's new creation since Jesus accomplished everything 2,000 years ago. It is finished. So we have all the promises of God through Jesus Christ, our Lord, and our Savior, and our true Messiah. So it's a matter of what everyone just shared tonight, what uh, 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 Fern, Pastor Fern shared, what Michael shared. That was a beautiful example, what he shared in the encyclopedia. How could not God be in control? It, it is absolutely a fact that God is in control. He just shared it. I don't even want to... Well, he just I, just, I want to ask you one thing, though. I want to ask you one thing about the control of God issue. Michael, is God in control of your life? Um, 
Well, I mean, I, I have free will. I have the ability to do things. Right. And so um, I guess it's a, uh, it's a matter of semantics. I mean, I, I give my life to him, but he still gives me free will. Right. So Amen. God is sovereign. There's no doubt about it. God is sovereign. Uh, God is, uh, he could destroy us in two seconds if he wanted to. But if you have, if you have decided, Michael, if you have decided that you want to go to hell, what will God do? He will allow it. So he's in control, but he's allowing things. And that's where I think we get hung up on that, because there's a Mm -hmm. difference. You know, he's in control, but he is allowing things. He, um, uh, you know, he's so gracious that he gave us free will. And and, and he also he also he also told us and I'll be darned if I can't find the voice. I quote this verse all the time. What is the verse? uh, Be imitators of God. What is that? It's it's verse five, one of something. Does anybody know? Let me think. Let me think. Uh, okay. uh, it's, uh, oh, it's, it, uh, it's not in Ephesians. No, no, no. How is it worded again? Be, Be imitators, imitators of, of God. Be imitators of God. Is Paul, it Galatians 5 1? Uh, you know, I can't okay. find the base. Ephesians 5 1 and 2. Is it Ephesians? Yeah. That's what I, I, I was thinking of Ephesians, but I was not. Yeah, it was Ephesians. Okay, okay. Ephesians 5 1 and 5 2. Um, follow God exa- God's example. Therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave Himself up for us as a fragrant mm-hmm. offering and sacrifice Amen. to God. Um, mm-hmm. Now, <clears throat> there's no way that we can be imitators of God uh, unless we're born in the image of God. Correct. Is that correct, Pastor Fern? Correct, but uh, in the epitome of our creation, remember, there's one thing that God could not control, and he's still in not control of us, Right. and that's to choose. To choose, If you exactly. choose to say, if you choose, it's very, it's very reluctant for people to say, okay, you know what, uh, I choose not to believe in God no more. Mm-hmm. You know, and you right. have Christians done that, throw in the towel. Right, right, they right. Say, they say, okay, uh, I just don't believe in this. Uh, they go try something else. Right. Well, uh, here, here, God here, doesn't control that. Here, let me. You were somebody was quoting Hebrews before. God spoke the universe into being without anything material, right? Uh-huh. Correct. Okay, He spoke, and the planets were. Uh-huh. He created them with the power and the strength of His mouth. Well, what I'm saying is we can operate in that realm too, mm-hmm. and yes, our yes. mouth, our mouths are either our downgoing or our upbringing, and if right. if, if, if your your faith and your mouth have got to be acting in concert with each other, because really what you are, and by the way, Nicole from Vancouver, British Columbia is on with us, you are what you confess. Right. Amen. And you and, and you know what? You are what you confess in secret. Mm-hmm. If you say in secret that I'm nothing, the devil jumps in your shoulder and says, "Boy, is that ever the truth?" Pastor Dean, so you're saying we are uh, we are what we eat, basically. We eat this, then we get the the biological aspect. Hey, I'm of living. I'm it. living proof. I'm living proof. If, if, well, if you eat you too much eat, Danish? If, if, you, if, you eat, if I eat too much apple pie, guess what? My stomach gets bigger. <laughs> and guess what? I've eaten too much apple pie, and guess what's happened? It's more than this, that. It's brownies. <laughs> well, the more, you eat the, the more you eat the Word of God, the more you're going to be like God. Hello, Nicole. Hi, Hi Pastor Nicole. Dean. Hi, Chris. Hi, everyone. Hi. God bless Hello. you. Amen. So, uh, so I'm going to go back to Barb for just one second. So if... So if you Barb, if you accept God's word as absolute truth, uh you know that he says um in first John three two, beloved, now we are the sons of God 
and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when Jesus shall appear, we shall be like him. That's a different world, and and that's really the world we're talking about, isn't it? The world of faith, which can change our world. It certainly changed your world, Barb. Amen. You know, but I'm blessed with something. I'm not a theologian. I don't have all this book knowledge, and so I just abide in Christ. You and know, he I'm going to take the position. He puts you, me in the position. He brings right, the people right. to me. He fills my mouth. I speak as the Holy Spirit speaks to me. Amen. And that's what Jesus was doing with Jairus, uh, that story, Jairus. I can't Jairus, remember. Jairus, yeah. Jairus. He, okay. Yeah. You have to remember, he was God, and he was speaking what he heard from the Father. So he didn't just go off like a loose cannon and start, you know, speaking stuff. He spoke what he heard. And if you're abiding in Christ, well, that's just what you do. It's it's natural. It's like breathing. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Nicole, can you add anything to that? Um, I just wanted to say in Ephesians, in Ephesians 6, later on, it says, let no man deceive you with vain words. So if we believe the words that people are speaking over us, that are negative, that are of disbelief, we're going to end up in damnation. And and today, I, I know that for a fact, because I've had people do that in my church, in my family, and I believed it, and, and I ended up in damnation. And today, praise the Lord, <laughs> I went to a, a service and just believed God, and he refilled me and baptized me again with the Holy Spirit. So oh, I just give God oh, the for that and I'm just so grateful. Well, you know what? Your enemy is anyone who would rather discuss your past than your future. Your enemy is anyone who weakens your passion for your future and your dream. Your enemy is anybody who attacks the weak around you. Your enemy is sometimes those of your own household and sometimes they can be right in your church. It's even in and the church, can... Dean. It's Pardon even me? in the church. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. And 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 uh but the thing is with you just now again because of your faith because of your faith the perfect will of god is your deliverance from your enemy amen god is good god is and, so good and, and i believe that you know we all have enemies and our ultimate enemy really is satan because Satan is working through some, you know, Satan, and, 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 and don't get me wrong, you know, I've got sisters and brothers that are not saved, and I love these guys very, very, very much, and, and uh, you know, you can, you can choose your friends, but not your family, and, and I am not going to give up mixing and talking and having fun with my brothers and sisters because they're not oh, yeah. saved. Uh, you know, I'm just going to continue to live an example of, of of what Jesus wants me to live, and eventually I, I believe that it's going to rub off. And but but the Holy Spirit, I mean not the Holy Spirit, the the um, the dark spirits of the world of the of, of of what's going to happen is they're going to work through loved ones, and and, right. and we've got to be careful about. <laughs> Listen, you know what? It's not. We have ninety seconds to go. Ninety seconds. Can you believe that this two hours went by so quick? And I'm going to ask Bob, a uh, Barb brother, Barb from uh, Dearborn. Could you please uh, say a very quick closing prayer for us, Barb, as we leave uh, Pastor Dean live? Okay, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this time, and I ask that you bless my sisters and brothers. I ask, Father, that you, that you heal every person from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Recreate every cell. By the stripes of Jesus, that blood pressure was healed. We don't accept it, and we cast it out and tell it to take a hike. In Jesus' name, bless us, Lord, and bless you. You know what? I, I just love the way... Uh, uh, Barb speaks to the demons. You know, she speaks in just plain old language. You go take a hike. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Listen, Nicole, it's about time they know what, to get back. They know what I'm talking about. 
Yes, yes. <laughs> Nicole, it's about time you came back to the program. We thank you and God bless you. Uh, bless Reverend you. Mike, thank you so much. Barb, uh, Marie Olette, God bless you for listening. And uh, everybody, we thank you for Pastor Fern. It was such, uh, you have to come back now. And Chris and everybody, we want to thank you all for being here. And, uh, and, uh, God bless everybody, and uh, please come back to the program tomorrow night at 10 o'clock or whenever you can. All right? Okay. Good night, everybody. Good night. Okay, Stasha Pendowski, you turned the theme song on at the wrong time. So let's let's start the theme song, and good night, everybody. God bless you. This is Pastor Dean. I love you. Bye-bye.